Well, here we are. Happy Halloween, everybody. Agatha All Along is officially over. This is going to be my season one finale review, as well as just an overall review of season one, because the last time I actually talked about Agatha All Along was when I got to see the first four episodes early, and I put out that review, and a lot of people hated on me because I said it was kind of underwhelming. I didn't hate it. I just didn't feel anything towards it but now after seeing the rest of the show because I was planning on reviewing every episode week to week but I decided you know what I'm gonna wait because I just got to see the rest of the show to see its entirety and now I can officially say I'm an Agatha stan I thoroughly really like this show I would even go as far to say almost love the show I did love quite a few episodes and I found these last three to be phenomenal now again maybe i haven't spoken with anyone else who watched the two finale episodes i'm the only one i don't know how you guys are feeling but definitely leave your thoughts down below please hit that like subscribe button comment down below your guys thoughts and well without further ado we're gonna get into the spoiler ramble of agatha all along so if you're new to my videos when i cover tv specifically episode reviews i get pretty rambled in here it's very much nonchalant just having fun and I'm not, I'm probably going to miss some things per se, but please leave your thoughts and we can continue that conversation down below. But without further ado, let's get into this. So as I said from the top, if you didn't watch my original video, I was underwhelmed from Agatha all along originally. And I, I thought to myself, you know, maybe the back half is going to be stronger than the front half. Maybe some things will come along in the front or in the back half that make me appreciate the first half a little bit more. And this kind of the same thing kind of happened with Loki season two. I loved Loki season one, loved it in its entirety, but found myself a little bit underwhelmed from the first half. Then I saw the back half and I loved it. It I made up for the first half, but it also made me appreciate the first half more specifically for what they were trying to do. And Agatha is basically the same thing. And it's very much the turnaround of how most of these Disney plus Marvel shows have been is the first half's great. The back half sucks or the back half's rushed. And I never felt like Agatha all along was ever rushed in any sort of way, specifically in that the whole back half episodes and the development of the coven, the development of the witch's road, the development of Agatha herself. And of course, Wiccan, uh, I just thought was all phenomenal. And the ending of this series is great, but there's a couple things that make me now appreciate the first half more and kind of get rid of one of my issues that I had, which I couldn't talk in my non-spoiler review, which was some of this just doesn't feel real. It, a lot of it just feels uneven. And whether that was intentional or not, I come to believe that Jack Schaefer did make this intentional. And I think a lot of that intentional stuff is now from the fact that Wiccan, there is no witch's road. There is none. He fabricated and created the whole thing just like the Scarlet Witch did for Westview. And I saw some fans had been predicting this. I didn't think it was going to happen, and it did, and it was fantastic. Now, from the comic book point of view, it, it's a little bit different, but I, I kind of appreciate that. I like what the adaption they did for live action, and... The fact that Wiccan, Wanda's child, was the one that did all this out of trauma, out of not the unknowing, I think was a massive piece of it and something that kind of blew my mind. And I think will lead to the return of the Scarlet Witch eventually and of course will lead to the return of Tommy. But I thought this was a fantastic, fantastic twist that makes you again look back at everything else that you'd already seen and seeing how it kind of comes about. And, and what a shitty thing for Agatha. Like, she first is under Wanda's curse, comes out of it, and then gets stuck under basically Wiccan's whole entire imaginary thing. Like, that is amazing. But the thing that I loved is that she knew him instantly. And when the last episode started, where it started showing Agatha's backstory, I was like, oh, th this is kind of interesting to have now instead of, like, earlier into the season. But it works and it worked so wonderfully in the fact that it it never felt like it it hindered anything it was like that final perfect thing for us to understand agatha from one point of view understand her relationship a little bit more with death i i think there's some tidbits there that i'm curious to see if we get more of in a season two or whatever they decide to do next with these characters but 
that's one thing that I wish they would have developed just a little bit more. But the fact that death gave her more time with her son and then took him, which just turned Agatha. I mean, she was already a monster in some ways, but even deeper down that hole. And seeing how she fabricated the entire witch's road thing to just kill witches. I mean, it's baffling and it's scary and it works and it it ties back to that whole thing of her feeling confused but instantly knowing oh i know whose kid this is she knew from that point of view and it wasn't just because of certain little instances it was because of the whole entire witch's road creation and on top of this the other thing i still have questions on maybe i missed it was like those other witches that were chasing them like we never really got a conclusion to that but still questions to be answered later on maybe maybe i did miss it maybe it did get an answer i was still obsessing over the fact that we got a wiccan live action suit that that was pretty awesome like when he came in i was like oh shit hell yeah hell fucking yeah and i'm sure i wasn't the only fan doing that too like this this really impressed me and i say this as someone who did also love wandavision but i found myself disappointed in the wandavision finale and I'm really happy that Agatha all along didn't just become another Marvel Studios finale with action and magic fights and anything like that. In the end of the day, it was kind of a very subtle, subdued reveal and of the hand of the tricks and everything that was kind of going on with a very emotional performance from Katherine Hahn. And that, again, really surprised me. That, again, was something that I wasn't expecting from the first four episodes. The first four episodes were just fun. But this series slowly but surely didn't just stay entertaining, but it became emotionally developed for these characters and made me care about Agatha and made me care about Joe Locke's character Wiccan and even to the certain sense of all the other witches. And one of the other things that I think also needs to be acclaimed is how great Aubrey Plaza is. Her reveal a couple weeks back as death was great. And then these last two episodes, specifically the one before the finale, she was just fantastic. And I liked that kiss that they got and how that was the kiss of death. But one thing I was kind of sitting there, I was like, well, we still got one episode left of Agatha. What's that last episode going to be about? And at the end of the last, the second to last episode, when he screams, and you hear Agatha's voice, I was like, oh my God, they're making Agatha a ghost, which is like one of my favorite things in the comics and some of the games, like if you ever played the Midnight Suns game, she was a ghost in there. And that was such a big piece of her storyline going forward. And I feel in some way she is looking out after Wanda's kids. And again, just this whole through line just is kind of perfection like in some ways i feel like she sees her own kid in billy and to the point of how the whole entire series ends with her saying let's go find tommy well that makes me go yeah let's fucking find him now i need another season right away and i didn't think i'd be saying that at the start of the series what a turnaround this show has been and and one thing that really just shakes that up is jack schaefer's writing Again, I really take back. I was so wrong. I was so, so wrong. And I'm so happy to be here saying that I'm an Agatha stan. And I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts down below. So overall, I really, really liked Agatha all along. I think it starts immensely slow, starts a little kooky and weird, and may find itself a little bit underwhelmed. But once I got to these last few episodes, it just started building and building and building with certain reveals that were predictable, but some that I did not see coming personally and some that just made me go, holy shit, that was awesome. And that makes me so happy to be able to say that because that's what I love to do. I love to talk about positive things. I don't like to come on here and rant. And I was a little bit worried that I was going to be coming on because I had planned to finish this review today was to come on and start talking shit. And that's not what I wanted to do. So thank God I can say that I really liked Agatha all along. I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts again down below. I really like the Wiccan reveal. I love the death reveal. Hope we get more of Aubrey Plaza down the road. I love the fact that Agatha is now a ghost. I love that now they're going to find Tommy. I love the whole backstory of Agatha and her son Nicholas. That kind of was really heartbreaking to me and almost honestly made me cry. Catherine Hahn in that whole like mental asylum little area with the light. That almost broke me. Like so many different little tidbits. And then of course, like I said, uh, Wiccan coming in in his full outfit was just fantastic 
Um, the, everyone really won me over in the end, end of the day on this series. And yeah, I'm happy. So thank you guys so much again for watching this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Can't wait to read your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.